What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to take you to Asheville, North Carolina to go behind the scenes with Clawhammer Supply and to show you my experience in one of the best beer cities on the East Coast. Back at the end of last year, Clawhammer asked me to come down and do a collab with them and I thought it would be fun to bring CH from Homebrew for Life on board and here we are. One awesome weekend in Asheville later and I feel like I've known these guys for a long time. Traveling like this for a collaboration in person with two other amazing YouTube channels is honestly one of the coolest experiences I have ever had as a result of being a part of this awesome YouTube community. It was a very quick trip, a Friday afternoon to a Sunday afternoon at the end of April, but we made the most of our time by brewing in the Clawhammer HQ and exploring the vibrant Asheville beer scene. Kyle's generosity can't be understated. A massive personal thank you to him and the entire Clawhammer team for their hospitality. And CH, I owe you a big time for that ride to the airport. Asheville was surprisingly not hard to get to. From Boston, I took a cheap flight down to Charlotte, made good use of a three hour layover by checking out some brew pubs in the airport, including the Wicked Weed Bar, and then jumped on a very short flight over to Asheville. Kyle picked me up in the van and we headed on over to the office to check out the studio. The studio is a seriously impressive setup. Lights are mounted up in the ceiling, there's a full bar and kitchen, and editing suites and offices in the back. I spent an hour or so helping Kyle prep for the upcoming brew day, and then got to sample some of Clawhammer's awesome beers, including the Tesla-themed Giga Beer, and some amazing dark lagers on Nitro. After that, we headed on down to downtown Asheville to meet CH and Ennett. Unfortunately, Ross was out of town for this one, but we'll have to meet him another time. Asheville's beer scene is excellent. It holds the number two spot in the United States for the most breweries per capita, following closely behind Portland, Maine. The first stop we headed to was Burial Brewing Company, a really vibrant spot with a ton of indoor and outdoor spots to eat and drink. They had an interesting Russian Imperial Stout series that I actually would have loved to try out, but I decided not to since I'd been drinking all day already. Uh, and I was expecting a fairly long evening. So I actually ended up going for a Schwartz beer and a Baltic Porter instead. What really made my night though, was running into someone who'd watched all three of our channels and called us out. Great times, good conversation was had by all. Next stop was Wedge Brewing. Again, so many choices, so little time. They had a massive beer menu, but we only had time for one beer. So I grabbed a cream ale and then we headed to the next spot, High Wire Beer Garden. This spot was awesome. A massive, massive beer garden with lots of great options. I settled on a very well done Italian Pilsner, but by this time it was getting late and we elected to all call it a night. The next morning I got up early and had some coffee out in front of Kyle's Airbnb. It was sunny, lush, 75 degrees and in the middle of the woods, which was a really nice change from Boston where this time of year it was basically barely above freezing, pretty wet and rainy and almost always noisy. Immediately, we headed up to the studio to get set up. Everyone had their cameras out. Lawson and Nathaniel mic'd everybody up, and then we got rolling on the brew day. Man, oh, he's got one too? What up, yo? Fun, what happened to my face? It's just my face. It's, it's a real life Snapchat <laughs> filter. What's up, dude? How are you? I'm great, man. Good. Good to see you. Right. Is that you? Yeah. Is that your camera? Yeah. Looking good, man. Thanks, man. How'd you sleep? Leave it to Kyle to come up with an idea like brewing beer in a sprinter van. And that's exactly what we did with all of our shots taken from inside the van. Oh, shot through the roof. That would go viral. <laughs> we sent an inch and a half track lamp into space. <laughs> I'm so used to doing all of my own filming and production that it took a while to get used to having someone put a camera in my face and ask me questions or have me say certain lines. Uh, but it was a lot of fun and I learned a ton. I, I really enjoyed hanging out with these guys, talking YouTube, production, and brewing. Kyle had gone ahead and brewed the exact same beer a month prior, so we were actually able to try the beer that we made, which was a pressure fermented hoppy lager with Talus hops. I've never had anything like it before. Talus has a phenomenal strawberry, grapefruit, and kiwi flavor to me uh, that had me coming back for many refills of that same beer. It's got a bubbles. I can see through it. It's got a delicious looking yeah. hue. I like very, to do it. Very close up to it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can't. But. It's got a good straw amber color. Excellent head. Yeah, what about the... Uh, what about the legs? The, the legs. <laughs> what about the smellies? Definitely get that citrus, no doubt. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Almost kind of limey citrus. I'm getting like a kiwi. Yeah, I'm more, kiwi. I'm, yeah. I'm more in something green. I'm more in berry land. Yeah. Very lame. <laughs> I am, man. I'm more in Candyland. Oh. I'm in Asheville. <laughs> well, 
Cheers, guys. Sounds Cheers. like strawberry to me if that's what it is. Can we go for it? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. Kind of tastes like the uh, best day ever. Dude, this is amazing. Yeah, it's like strawberry. Ooh. 100% heavy yeah. strawberry. Yeah, super wild. That is really it's good. It's funny you said that because now the kiwi strawberry and yeah. pink lemonades come into yeah. that. Yeah, After the brew day was all wrapped up and we moved on to the phase of sitting around and drinking beers, I broke out a couple bottles of West Blutter and 12 that I brought back from Belgium to share with everybody. All in all, it was a really great time and nothing beats a good brew day with like minded people. Okay. This day just got awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Can we so. quickly recap that? Yeah, sure. So I brought some West Blutter and 12 back from Belgium and I just wanted to share it with everybody here. I want to get everybody's opinion on Sweet. what this beer is like, but uh, Hell yeah. most people think that this is one of the best My beers fault. in the world. Great right Beer puts this in the top five right every out. year, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to see what everybody's opinion was on it. Sorry, Ross. I'm here. I'm just be like, hey, like, I'm glad to get like, that's a beer. That's a weird thing. It's not really a joke. No, no, yeah, yeah. It's just more like shot and that booze right PBR off is a river. Belgian beer, right? <laughs> The Belgian something? Yeah, right next to a Bud Light Lime. Wait, are you serious? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just made in small batches by the monks of the Abbey. Like, they don't really make all that much of it. Is that in, like, the Humber? No, no, this is, uh, this is their bottle. Did yeah. you make a video? They don't have a label in it. Yeah. <laughs> the label is the cap. That's Dangerous. genesis. Well, that that a, it, you smell the alcohol, but you don't taste yeah. it at all. It has, like, That's a bready, really bready. It. It's kind of, like, bready and... Bread bread and honey. Like, Raisiny to me. Banana, yeah, banana like not crazy raisiny, crazy raisin. Just those dark kind of. It's really, I would just say it's like very complex. It's just got this crazy ability to mask the strength of it. Yeah, yeah. True, just like, yeah. It's like a wine almost. Like as you let yeah. this thing get a little bit warmer, it's gonna change in flavor too. Yeah, it's shooting. Thanks for yeah. bringing that back. 100%. It's crazy. To the apartment brewer, <laughs> Dilly <laughs> Dilly, <laughs> we're here. What's a bottle sell? <laughs> What's a bottle sell for on the black market? <sighs> One kidney. I don't know, but they are not cheap. Yeah, yeah amazing. These monks are getting up. <laughs> if you were, were used three words to describe it, what, what three words would you This use? beer? Yeah. I would use... Fig, banana. Complex, strong beer. I actually, when doing the research to get the tourism funding, I read about the Abbey monks and then Trappist breweries and stuff like that. Yeah. It's dope to actually have that. After this, it was time to head back into town for food. So we ended up walking about a half a mile to Haywood Common and The Whale. That was an awesome spot to eat food, and I actually had one of the best burgers I've had in recent memory there. I also grabbed a really nice Keller Pills and a mixed fermentation Saison. Everybody seemed pretty beat from the brew day though, so we did call it an early night once again. The next morning was the last day in Asheville for both me and CH. We met up with Kyle for breakfast at the Ultra Coffee Bar. After this, CH and I parted ways with Kyle, and we decided to make the most of the time that we had left by hitting a bunch more breweries in Asheville. So we headed downtown again to check out Dissolver first. This place was absolutely awesome. Their thing is really just never having more than one recurring beer. Their only flagship is a Czech Pilsner on a side pole tap, which was actually pretty cool. Um, I had a great hazy and a dark Mexican lager while I was here. We also got a chance to chat with one of the owners for a while, who uh, took us on a little bit of a private tour. Next, we headed over to the Wicked Weed Funkatorium. I know there's a lot of upset about Wicked Weed's InBev takeover, but let me tell you that none of that influence really seems present at the Funkatorium. So many amazing sour blends and Brett beers to choose from, and easily one of the most interesting indoor and outdoor beer gardens I've ever seen, with multiple bars and barrels everywhere. After the Funkatorium, we made our way over to the Green Man Brewing Dirty Jack's location, the original spot of Green Man Brewery. This place had such a cool garage vibe uh, that I really just enjoyed. It looked like it was an old mechanic shop and it just had a really nice down-to-earth vibe. Here I had an amazing Czech dark lager and a solid hazy IPA. After that, we were out of time, so we hopped in CH's truck and headed back to the airport. I love the fact that I could order so many different beer styles in Asheville, especially lagers. It didn't feel like I was drowning in hazy IPAs like the Northeast, where it's legitimately tough to find non-trendy beer styles. For me, nothing beats variety in a city's beer scene. All of these locations had unique vibes and something that made each of them very memorable. All in all, I'd highly recommend Asheville for any beer traveler, but the best part of it was sharing the time with fellow beer lovers and content creators. 
I always learn a ton when I'm working with like-minded people. You never know what your experience is going to be or what you're going to learn when you're doing one of these collabs, but it's almost always a wonderful time, and this was no exception. In times like these where everyone is divided over race, creed, and politics, as CH says, the one thing that brings everyone together is beer. The community that surrounds it is awesome, and I am so glad to be a part of it. CH, Kyle, Emmett, Lawson, and Nathaniel, thank you for having me over, and I wouldn't hesitate to do it again.